Hello students, welcome to lecture 30 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on applications of Photonic Crystal Fibers. So here is the lecture outline. So we will discuss about Photonic Crystal Fibers based sensors. We will be discussing about physical sensors uh, for measuring uh, temperature, refractive index, electromagnetic field. We will also discuss about biomedical sensors measuring glucose and blood components and then we will discuss about PCFs or photon crystal fibers for terahertz guidance. So let us take up the first topic that is uh, photon crystal based physical sensors. Okay? So photon crystal fibers have an advantageous geometry uh, over the standard optical fiber okay? that is basically this uh, photon crystal itself. Right. So, generally a PCF has either a hollow core or a solid core. So, this is a hollow core and then you have air holes okay, forming the cladding part or you have a solid core okay, with air holes which are distributed in different patterns. Right? So, light is basically guided by the distribution of these air holes. Also, the propagation of light can be manipulated by changing the distribution of the air holes as well as if there is any change with the environment. Okay? So, the unique nature of photon crystal fiber is drawing a lot of applications and mainly towards sensing applications. Okay? So, why uh, they are important? Because uh, photon crystal fiber based sensors provide, you know, a uh, high sensitivity, flexibility, small size and robustness and that is why they can be also used in many unfavorable situations. The small physical dimension of the photon crystal fiber based sensing probes make them suitable for attaching or inserting in a system. The sensing probes can be connected with the control system without the use of any wear and uh, they can be used in and hazardous and uh, noisy environment or high temperature, high voltage, high electromagnetic field and also even in uh, explosive environments, okay? even for the purpose of remote sensing. So, photonic crystal uh, or you can say PCF based sensors have uh, great uh, design flexibility, but their wholly internal uh, structure can be filled with uh, the analyte so that you know a controlled interaction can take place between the propagating light and the analyte sample. So this will greatly enhance the sensitivity of the fiber optic sensors and you know they also open up the possibility of making portable sensors. PCF sensors have wide range of applications like measuring different physical parameters such as uh, temperature, pressure, strain, twist, torsion band, curvature and also electromagnetic field. So, these are just name a few. So, observation as well as control of these parameters are really important in daily applications and one important application is civil uh, structural health monitoring, something like the monitoring the health of a dam and a bridge or some particular wall boundary. As I also mentioned that these are also very useful in uh, border fencing to manage the intrusion detection and safety of a country. So, PCF or photon crystal fiber based physical sensors are gaining a lot of attention due to their in situ and remote sensing capabilities. They have also immunity to hazardous environments of say um, high electromagnetic fields and also high voltage. So, this kind of sensors will still work within those kind of you know very high field regions and they can be used for biochemical sensing and for oil, is, oil and gas temperature and so on. So, here is a sorry. So, here is a entire spectrum of different kind of applications. So, as you can see I discussed briefly about uh, security applications in fencing you can use this kind of uh, fiber based sensors, you can use uh, them for bio biochemical sensing, they can be used for high electromagnetic field measurement, civil structural health monitoring, they can go even 
smaller like you can use them for lab on a cheap application for monitoring oil and gas fields where it may not be you know easy for other kind of sensors or human being to go and take the data you can be also used for distributed temperature sensing environmental monitoring and so on so we will be basically discussing a few applications in this lecture so the first one we will discuss is temperature sensor where we have index guiding photonic crystal fiber uh, filled with liquid ethanol so the material dispersion in particular is taken to be pure um, to be the refractive index of pure silica and the thermo optic coefficient alpha um, of liquid ethanol so in that case you know the thermo optic coefficient is defined as n equals n naught minus alpha t minus t naught so with a change in the temperature it will also affect the refractive index of the material right so n and n naught and not are basically the refractive index measured at temperature t and t naught respectively so alpha for liquid ethanol is this so this is the you know our uh, thermo optic coefficient and you can look into the setup in more detail so you have a light source and a 10 db coupler okay so you can have a power meter over here okay and then you have this uh, ethanol filled uh, pcf and then also you can measure the power so how it works this is the detailed diagram of this so what will happen you know because the relative confinement loss pl of the fiber core is given by where n effective and l okay so pl is basically given by um, this formula okay okay so you can see that the uh, relative confinement loss pl of the fiber core is uh, given by pl equals 20 log e base 10 times k naught and imaginary power of the effective refractive index times the length of the fiber okay so with this you can actually see that the confinement loss which can be measured as db per meter okay and this is how it changes uh, with temperature okay and what is d by um, capital lambda over here this is basically the air filling ratio now this can be understood by looking into the fiber cross section so uh, the whole diameter is taken as uh, small d okay and uh, the diameter of the core is taken as capital d and uh, capital lambda is basically the pitch or the periodicity so here are the diameters you can actually see that pitch is 5.6 micron whole diameter is small d that is 3.6 micron and the core diameter is 7.6 micron so if you take small d by capital lambda ratio that comes out to be 0 0.7 for this particular fiber so here you see that the confinement loss is plotted for uh, two different wavelengths 1500 nanometer the black one and the red triangles for 800 nanometer and uh, it has been a function of uh, temperature so you can clearly see that you know at 1500 it shows much more sensitivity so this particular figure shows the temperature dependence of transmission power for pcf at 1550 nanometer and uh, the theoretical data and the experimental data more or less coincide and it shows how it can change with you know how the transmission power can change with uh, temperature and that is why you are measuring the power over here okay and uh, this particular figure shows you the temperature dependence of the uh, transmission power change so this is basically in db okay and you can see different color actually represents the different wavelength so uh, you can clearly see that this particular one which is at 1550 shows much more sensitivity as compared to the other two okay so what we understood here that at 1550 the power received is in direct proportion to the temperature and this is a fact that is consistent with the theory because a lower refractive index of the liquid ethanol is equivalent to an increased uh, contrast between the core and the cladding indices uh, the air leakage to the cladding 
and hence the confinement loss is reduced with temperature. Finally, owing to the broadening of the propagation modes of the fiber with increasing wavelength, the temperature dependence is also more sensitive for the longer wavelength which we can see here. But shorter wavelength it is not much sensitive to the temperature. Now we move on to the next type that is refractive index sensor. So, refractive index is an important basic physical parameter as we all know. In situ measurement of this parameter will help to identify a material in many practical applications such as in chemical industry, gas and oil field, um, food processing, quality control and that will basically help us to check any kind of adulteration in liquid or it can also help us in identifying biomolecules. Okay? So, to do that uh, basically um, this kind of a PCF is uh, involved. So, here the three layers of the cladding air holes in silica are so you can see these are three layers basically of the cladding air holes. So basic is uh, the background is silica fiber okay, and they are all arranged in a triangular array. And you can see the lattice pitch here is 4 micron. The central hole diameter is a very small one it is only uh, it is given as DC central hole okay, and it is 1 micron. And this helps reduce the effective index of the fundamental mode making it easier to match with the core mode and uh, the defect mode. Okay? And then you have cladding air holes, okay? this one and this one. Okay? So, also this, okay? this is the first layer one. Okay? And uh, the cladding holes of the first layer has uh, got um, the diameter D1 equals 1.6 micron and they would function similar to the central air holes which adjusts the sensitivity of the sensor by adjusting the overlap of the evanescent field with the analyte. So, what is the role of the second one? The, the dark air field uh, or you can say the diameter, okay. the diameter of the black air hole filled with the analyte is uh, considered to be D2 and that is 3.6 micron and the remaining air holes are all having uh, a diameter of 2.4 micron and that is represented by D. So, the refractive index of the analyte which is getting measured is represented by N. So, here also you can find out the confinement uh, loss of the mode or you can say modal loss can be calculated as PL equals 20 log E base 10 and times K naught imaginary part of the n effective times L. Okay? And the confinement loss spectra for the core mode as a function of wavelength with the analyte different refractive indices are shown over here. So, you can see this is the loss and this is the wavelength and this is what is happening for different uh, refractive index of the analyte. So, the refractive index is the main factor that basically affects the refractive index sensing mechanism. So, the sensitivity of the proposed uh, sensor can be expressed as delta lambda peak by delta n. So, for unit change in refractive index how much is basically the shift in the uh, uh, wavelength, right? wavelength peak or you can say peak wavelength change. So, this two can be measured and you can find out the sensitivity. So, the detection limit of the sensor is the minimum range in the or minimum change in the refractive index which is detectable by this sensor and delta lambda minimum shows the uh, minimum spectral resolution. So, the smaller the detection limit the better will be the performance of the sensor. So, you can uh, write you know R equals uh, delta n delta lambda min by delta lambda peak. So, this one shows the resonance wavelength as a function of uh, the analyte refractive index and you can see it is a pretty much linear plot. Okay? And this is the plot of the sensitivity. 
So, you can also see the sensitivity is uh, represented by nanometer per RIU that is refractive index unit and you can see this is a very, very sensitive, very, very high sensitive sensors. Okay? So, if you assume delta mean, delta lambda mean to be 0 0.1, you can calculate the refractive index of the analyte okay, um, in, the for, in the range of say 1.425 uh, to 1.5 and 1.5. 45 to 1.6, uh, the corresponding uh, minimum detection limit will be something like 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 6 uh, refractive index unit, something like that. So, it is a very, very you know um, sensitive sensors. So, the next one is electromagnetic sensor. So, electromagnetic field and the associated force is also one of the important and fundamental force of nature. It basically creates strong and detectable uh, for high electricity consume, consuming objects which is harmful for. So, the next one is uh, electromagnetic sensors. So, electromagnetic field and associated force is one of the fundamental forces of nature. It creates um, strong and detectable pattern for uh, high electricity consuming uh, objects which is harmful for living beings, but this field is not detectable by sense organs. So, sensing this field as well as its current in many cases is an important task. So, in electric power industry and other places, uh, presence of metal may influence the electromagnetic field uh, measurement. So, the fiber optic sensors become very suitable for this kind of applications. Also, the properties of fiber for remote sensing are small size, um, they are non-conducting in nature and they have immunity to electromagnetic interference and that all these things make them suitable candidate for making you know, electromagnetic sensors based on PCF. So, inflect, inflectation of liquid crystal materials uh, into these micro holes of the photonic crystal fibers has been extensively studied for various types of in fiber tunable device applications. Um, inf infiltration of liquid crystals uh, materials will make this uh, photonic crystal fibers susceptible to the external field variation and a property which can be utilized to fabricate uh, all fiber sensors for parameters um, like you know temperature magnetic field and electric field. Solid core PCFs, they usually transmit light through a modified total internal reflection mechanism which we have already discussed. And if you have infiltration of high index material which are basically larger than silica such as uh, the liquid crystals, okay, they can cause uh, uh, the transmission mechanism to change from modified total internal reflection to you know the photonic band gap guidance. So, the mechanism of light propagation itself can change when you introduce this you know infiltration of liquid crystalline photonic crystal fiber. So, on infiltration the holy cladding region of the PCFs would assume the effective refractive index of the infiltrated liquid crystal material which is usually higher than that of the silica core region. So, under these you know, um, conditions, the guiding properties of the PCFs are primarily governed by the anti-resonant reflection from multiple cladding layers and uh, the transmission spectrum of the structure will then be determined by the refractive index contrast of the cladding layers. So, electromagnetic sensors, um, so if you see this particular figure, it shows you um, the schematic of the experimental setup to study reflected power response uh, of the liquid crystal infiltrated, uh, infiltrated uh, PCF probe for the measurement of external electric field intensity. So, what is done here? So, you have this uh, liquid crystal filling in a photonic crystal fiber and it is used as a sensor probe. and uh, for measuring um, high electric field intensity uh, with sensitivity of the order of 10 to the power uh, 10.1 dB per 
kilovolt okay um, rms per mm okay um, for the electric field intensity ranges ranges from this and it gives you a resolution of uh, 1 volt rms per mm so what you have here is uh, high speed optical uh, power meter okay there is a single mode fiber cable and then you have a tunable laser you have a optical circulator and this is the uh, single mode fiber to which this uh, pcf uh, probe is connected and this is where you know there are electrodes okay uh, be, uh, between which uh, this uh, liquid crystal infiltrate uh, PCF is placed and then this electrodes are basically connected to high voltage source and waveform generator. So what happens you can see from this schematic that the orientation of the liquid crystal molecules within the PCF uh, holes uh, below and above the threshold field. So if you apply electric field below the threshold field they are all aligned like this but as soon as you uh, make the field stronger than the threshold they all align with the particular field okay so using this method you can measure you know the uh, transmission through this particular uh, sensor so you can say the response of the sensor with an changing electric field intensity um, and the frequency is of 1 kilohertz okay at 1550 nanometer that is measured at room temperature right and you can see that the transmission at uh, a different electric field intensity okay behaves in this kind of a pattern so you can also use photonic crystals for biomedical sensors so in terms of biomedical usage pcfs can determine the following okay so you can think of you know glucose concentration measurement detecting different types of blood components identifying a blood cancer uh, circulate calculating the proteins dna's distinguish between pathogenic and um, hereditary diseases okay and uh, by in so these are all done by injecting the samples into uh, a photonic crystal so that there is a typo over here okay never mind so by injecting um, samples into photonic crystal uh, waveguides which displays uh, infection level or sensitivity so we'll take some of these applications as you can see here okay these are graphically presented uh, or schematically you can say so you can use the photonic crystal fiber for drug detection blood testing uh, counting you know red blood cells uh, dna cells then uh, glucose monitoring cancer cell detection and so on so let us take one commonly used sensor which is a glucose sensor so this is the cross section of the proposed fiber sensor which is uh, shown with six identical um, uh, solid cores okay and uh, the air holes are basically um, arranged in a triangular lattice having pitch constant of 2 microns and the diameter d of uh, 1.2 micron so the glucose concentration if you take uh, like 60 percent okay which has got a refractive index of 1.4394 at room temperature so we are con considering 20 degrees at uh, the room temperature here and that is filled in the central hole of the design pcf so this is how you know the refractive index of the glucose in water will change with different concentrations. So if you change the percentage from 10% to 16, 60%, this is how the refractive index will change. So the unit used here is refractive index unit. Okay, usually there is no unit as such, but this is where it is important to you use this unit for calculation of sensitivity and so on. So with increase in the concentration, the refractive index increases. Okay. So this is how the confinement loss can again be calculated. So this same 20 log E base 10. So you can actually get the numerical value from here. It is uh, 8.686 into 2 pi by lambda imaginary power of n effective into 10 to the power 6 dB per meter. So 
as I mentioned, so imaginary of n effective basically represents the imaginary part of the effective refractive index of a particular mode, right. So, the spectral sensitivity of the corresponding sensor is obtained. So, here different colors correspond to the different uh, concentration and you can see that their peak wavelengths are also different and these are the, the y axis tells you about the loss which is dB per meter. So, this is the relationship or uh, with relationship between the confinement loss and the different uh, samples of glucose solution, right. So, if you try to plot the you know spectral sensitivity of this particular sensor, you can say S equals delta lambda peak by delta lambda. So, what is delta lambda peak? That is the change in the peak wavelength and delta uh, so, and divided by delta n, sorry. So, delta n is basically the amount of change in the refractive index, okay. So, that will give you, uh, you know, so here the black line as the color coding here shows, this gives you the wavelength shift, okay, in uh, nanometer with different uh, glucose concentration and this is the sensitivity that has been calculated, okay. The next one is uh, blood component sensor. So, for that you can, you have to first know what are the refractive indices of different uh, body fluid component. So, if you take water, it has got a refractive index of 1.33, plasma has, blood plasma has 1.35, WBC has 1.36, hemoglobin has 1.38, RBC has got 1.40, okay. And uh, so, this is the proposed photonic sensors where these are the air holes, the background is silica and this is the, you know, core where the analyte will be placed, okay. And the silica can be represented by the refractive index given by this Selmer equation. So, how do you detect the different components? Again, you can measure what is the confinement loss, same same uh, equation can be used, okay. And you can see that these are the confinement loss with wavelength for different samples. So, uh, RBC, uh, WBC, plasma, water, all of them have different uh, values. Similarly, you can also understand that they will show different effective refractive index, okay, for this. So, different components of the blood will have different effective refractive index, okay, that also you can see from this particular figure. So, that helps you to detect different components in the blood. So, the last topic will be on um, photonic crystal fibers for terahertz guidance. So, it is known that dry air is the most transparent medium for terahertz propagation since it does not absorb terahertz waves. So, under this uh, concept, okay, an array of small, smaller air holes also known as uh, sub wavelength porous air holes is basically placed um, in the solid material core of a photonic crystal fiber. So, thus by transmitting more, most of the mode power through the porous air core, it is possible to propagate terahertz waves with uh, minimum absorption loss. So, that is the whole idea because terahertz has got uh, lowest loss in the dry air. So, one of the most important properties showed by the porous core PCFs is the controllability of birefringence. Now, birefringence is basically induced in polarization maintaining PCFs by deliberately uh, making the symmetry of either, you know, by deliberately breaking the symmetry of either um, core or cladding. So, a porous core spiral PCF will be shown uh, in this lecture that will help you to achieve ultra high birefringence by intentionally creating asymmetry in the core. Other important uh, modal properties such as effective material loss, bending loss, power fraction, dispersion and confinement loss, these will be thoroughly discussed by considering the variation of different structural parameters. So, this is a very um, unique design of uh, porous core uh, spiral photonic crystal fiber that was reported in this particular research paper, 
okay so you can see that the core is now shown in a very uh, enlarged view so these are vertical arrangement of air holes these are all air holes but of different uh, radius and they are uh, placed along a different spirals okay so the spiral topology has been chosen since it allows ultra low bending loss and it offers excellent mode confinement properties as compared to the conventional PCFs. So note that you know there are more air holes in the vertical axis uh, direction compared to the horizontal axis direction and uh, this creates asymmetry in the core. And the formation of such asymmetry is responsible for inducing a high uh, level of birefringence. Birefringence means there are different refractive index along the two different direction. So that way, you know, the proposed PCF uh, uses topaz as its background material, which is a refractive index of 1.5258, and it remains constant over the frequency range of 0 0.1 to 2 terahertz. Moreover, it shows uh, low loss and low dispersion at terahertz bands. In addition, it is insensitive to environmental aspects such as humidity and water vapor absorption. So, spiral symmetry consists of uh, 9 circular rings and 10 spiral arms where each arm consists of uh, 9 air holes. So, the first air hole in each uh, spiral ring is placed at a distance of RO okay, as shown here okay, and the distance of the second air hole of each ring from the center is calculated as R1 which is RO plus 0 0.48 times pitch that is uh, capital lambda which is the hole to hole distance between the two adjacent rings and uh, you can take RO equals lambda. Okay. So, these are the parameters considered over here okay and the diameter of the circular air holes in the cladding of the proposed structure is uh, selected as large as possible and that will ensure better light confinement. The size of the air holes should not be enlarged because the extension might result in overlapping of some of the air holes yeah that is very important. So, the number of air hole rings is selected as maximum here NR okay, um, that is capital NR is taken as 9. So, this is uh, the maximum possible to obtain low confinement loss since increasing the number of rings in the outer um, cladding results in tight light confinement in the core. So, the distance of the nth air hole from the center can be calculated using this uh, iterative formula and it can also shows an uh, angular displacement of theta n which is given by 360 degree divided by 2 into n where n is basically the number of rings. For example, here you can calculate the angular dispersion of the first ring to be theta 1 that is 360 divided by 2 n. The hole to hole distance between adjacent uh, vertical axis okay, um, is related to d core. So, this is d core and this is d c. Okay, this is lambda c. Okay. So, here you can see that you know la lambda c is basically 0 0.175 of d c. So, the core air core filling ratio that is d c by ca uh, capital lambda c is kept as large as possible which is here 0 0.24. So, selecting the core air core filling ratio this way will offer maximum birefringence. Moreover, the value of dc by lambda c um, should not be increased further since uh, this will result in uh, overlapping of few of these holes. So, that is the maximum limit. So, if you want to go into more details of why this uh, design was initiated and what are the minute details of the design, you can always refer to this paper that is shown in the reference. So, here we show the uh, mode field distributions of the proposed um, PCF for D core equals 4 uh, 10 microns and different operating frequencies. Um, so, this A is for 0 0.8 terahertz X polarization and the B is for Y polarization okay. and this one is for 1 terahertz 
okay, x polarization and this is 1 terahertz y polarization. This is for 1.2 terahertz x polarization and this one is for 1.2 terahertz y polarization, right. So, to operate as an effective polarization maintaining terahertz uh, PCF, um, the level of the birefringence should be as high as possible. So, one important thing here is that you know this mode distribution shows strong confinement of modes in the core, is not it? So, the birefringence as we are talking about, so the birefringence should be as high as possible. So, birefringence can be written as modulus of n x minus n y. So, B is basically birefringence, n x and n y are the refractive index or you can say effective refractive index along x and y direction or they are also associated with the x polarization and the y polarization modes. So, the birefringence as a function of air core filling factor that is d c over lambda c at uh, frequency of 1 terahertz is plotted here. Okay, as you can see that the birefringence keep on increasing with increase in this ratio okay, for the same value of uh, d core. So, these are the different core uh, diameters which are considered. So, the reason can be understood due to the fact that when uh, d c by lambda c uh, is increased, the diameter of the porous air holes also increases. Therefore, induced asymmetry becomes stronger and as a result your birefringence will increase. Obviously, this structure uh, exhibits nearly zero birefringence without porous air holes. It is important to note that the maximum value of uh, d c by lambda c is said to be equal to or less than 0 0.2 for here okay? because further extending the value of d c by lambda c will result in uh, overlap of the air holes along the vertical axis that we have discussed previously. Right? So, when the d core uh, is increased the air holes actually become larger that is true. So, therefore, asymmetry between the exploration and y polarization mode enhances and thus your birefringence also increases. An ultra high birefringence of 0 0.0483, okay, that is a very high value for birefringence that can be achieved at 1 terahertz frequency if you choose d core to be 410 micron and d by dc to be uh, equal to you know 0 0.24, right. So, this is the value we are reporting. Okay. So, effective material loss is also an important parameter in designing PCFs which are used for terahertz guidance and uh, is quantified by the following expression. So, you can have alpha effective. Okay. So, that is epsilon naught by mu naught square root of it that is represented by you know to the power of half and then you integrate over the area of the material. Okay, so, n alpha mat uh, intensity, so our modulus of E square is basically the intensity times dA divided by 2 times integration over all entire area okay, as z dA. So, what are this? So, epsilon naught mu naught are basically the permittivity and permeability of vacuum, n is basically the refractive index of the topaz, okay. alpha mat is the bulk material absorption loss. E is the electric field component, S z is basically the z component of the pointing vector. Okay? So, here you can see there are two integration time terms. Okay? So, the integration of the numerator in the equation is basically performed for all the solid material region of the topaz. So, that is called A mat area of the material and the denominator is integrated over the entire area or all the regions. So, you can call it a all. Okay? So, this uh, effective material loss which is having a unit of centimeter inverse can be plotted as a function of frequency for different values of core which are mentioned here for different polarization as well. Okay? Fine. So, these are the different core uh, dimensions and different polarization and one thing is kept, kept fixed here that is d by d c um, sorry d c by lambda c to be 0 0.24 because that is where you get the largest by difference.
So, the solid line indicates EML of X polarization as you can see here and all these uh, dashed lines are basically telling you about the Y polarizations. The calculated alpha CL for uh, 1 terahertz frequency for um, D core of 410 micron D by DC to be sorry DC by lambda C to be 0 0.24. Okay, if you put all these parameters back into this equation, okay, you will get this and this for x and y polarization modes. Okay. So, this is the plot of um, confinement loss okay, and effective material loss uh, for this proposed PCF okay, as a function of um, core air filling ratio that is basically DC by uh, lambda C to be 0 0.24 for different core diameters. So, these are the different colors representing different core diameters okay, and the frequency is kept fixed here which is uh, uh, 1 terahertz. Okay. So, this is another figure that shows the confinement loss as a function of the frequency for different core uh, diameters. Again, the solid lines shows X polarization, dashed lines shows the Y polarization and again you have done it for DC by lambda C to be 0 0.24. So, what is important here to notice is that the EML that is the effective material loss decreases with increasing D by DC okay, that is the core air filling ratio. Okay. A reverse relationship can be found for ACL okay, that is the confinement uh, loss okay, and uh, that is alpha CL huh? and when D by DC is increased the amount of air in the core region is also increased. Therefore, more light propagates through the porous core than the core material and as a result your effective material loss is actually getting reduced. On the other hand, you can say that an increased amount of air in the core is basically leading you to the reduction in the index contrast between the core and the cladding and that is why it is reducing your alpha CL. Okay. So, the another important parameter is mode power fraction okay, that basically describes the amount of power that propagates through different regions and it can be expressed by this expression. Okay, that is uh, lambda sorry integration over uh, the area of that particular region of interest divided by the total area. So, what is SZ as I mentioned earlier it is the Z component of the pointing vector and once you plot it. So, this is the fraction of mode power in the core air holes of the proposed PCF as a function of uh, frequency. Hmm. for different um, D core values okay, and different polarization and this is that ratio the core air hole ratio that has been maintained. Okay. So, what is evident here that for constant frequency for any frequency the fraction of mode power in the air core can increase with the increase in the value of uh, D core that is correct and this is due to the expansion of the air portion in the air uh, in the core region uh, uh, when you increase D core. So, here also you can um, see that um, with F equals 1 terahertz and if you choose D core to be 410 that is this blue one okay. and if you choose uh, this uh, value like uh, no, I think all the all these values are for uh, DC by lambda C equals 0 0.24. Okay, so you can say that about 31 percent, okay, uh, and 37 percent of total power um, propagates. So 31 percent for typically um, X polarized and 37 percent for Y polarized, right? So that is how you can interpret this particular graph. Bending analysis or bending loss analysis is also another important parameter for realizing PCFs in practical application. So, when a fiber is bent some waves tend to diffuse outward in the direction of the bend 
and that is when a bending loss will take place. So it's a bad thing. So we need to stop it. So using the conformal transformation method where a bent PCF can be represented by you know uh, equivalent straight one with a modified effective refractive index. So the following expression can be used there to represent the equivalent refractive index effective refractive index of the straight PCF. You can write n e q x y. So that is a refractive index of the equivalent straight PCF. So you have n x y that is the original refractive index of the PCF and then you have exponential 1 plus x by r. r is the bend radius and x is basically the distance from center of the PCF. So here you can see the figure. This figure shows uh, bending loss of the proposed PCF as a function of uh, the band radius for y polarization and we have also they have also considered uh, different values of d core okay so what you see either increasing the band radius okay or if you increase the core radius okay you can reduce your pending loss so here this way you are for each of them you are increasing the band radius you can reduce the bending loss and for one particular core radius you can see which has got the lowest one this triangle which is the largest d core so that that way it can help what is the reason the reason is that both at large band radius and large d core will permit a wider space for the propagation of the guided modes therefore the guiding modes will you know um, tend less to get diffused so you can actually find that for f equals 1 terahertz and if you choose d core equals 410 micron and for this particular value of uh, dc by lambda c and if you take band radius equals 1 um, centimeter you can estimate the band loss to be 9.62 into 10 to the power minus 2 db per centimeter for the y polarization modes. Dispersion also plays an important role uh, when PCFs are implemented for practical application since it indicates the amount of pulse broadening. So very small dispersion or you can say with uh, very with low dispersion variation is particularly suitable for you know the effective transmission of broadband waves. So as, as we have discussed before the refractive index of topaz is uh, constant over a wide range of uh, frequencies. Therefore you know the induced material dispersion in this case will be negligible and the overall dispersion uh, overall contribution to the dispersion will come from waveguide dispersion only. So the waveguide dispersion can be expressed using this particular expression where beta 2 can be written as 2 by c d n affected by d omega plus omega by c the second order derivative okay and uh, the, the unit will be picosecond per terahertz per centimeter okay where omega is basically the angular central frequency so omega equals 2 pi f f is the operating frequency n effective is nothing but the effective refractive index for that particular mode and c is the speed of light okay so here this particular figure shows the dispersion profile okay of the proposed pcf as a function of frequency and it can be seen that both uh, x and y so solid ones shows x polarization the dashed one shows y polarization Bo in both case you can see that you know very low and flattened dispersion over the entire uh, band of interest that is from starting from 0 0.9 to 1.8 terahertz and in this frequency range the variation of dispersion is about uh, 0 0.97 and uh, 1.42 uh, picosecond per terahertz per centimeter for case of uh, x polarization and y polarization respectively. You can also look into this insert, it, it can be clearly seen that for frequencies higher than 1.2, okay, they actually the this particular PCF exhibits very low dispersion variation. Okay. So the dispersion variation in this band 1.2 to 1.8 terahertz is only about 0 0.51 and 0 0.63 picosecond per terahertz per centimeter for the case of x polarization and y polarization respectively.
So, here it is worth mentioning that the exploration mode offers uh, lower dispersion than that of uh, the X polar, uh, y polarization mode over the entire frequency band and this is obvious since in contrast to the y polarization mode a majority of the mode power is basically consigned, uh, confined inside the core for the case of x polarization. The proposed structure will also you know offer relatively low effective uh, material loss and a very small confinement loss, small dispersion and low bending loss for the optimal design parameters. The structure is manufacturable due to its realistic size and it also consists only circular air holes in both core and cladding region. Therefore, you know it is obvious that the proposed fiber can become a potential candidate for effective delivery of polarization maintaining terahertz wave which is going to be having a lot of application in 6G technologies coming ahead. So, with that we will be concluding our lecture, we will be starting our discussion on designing a mirror waveguide and cavity in the next lecture. So, if you have got any queries regarding any part of this lecture, you can drop an email to this particular email address, but mention MOOC, Photonic Crystal and the lecture number on the subject line. Thank you.